Hey everyone, Mindflow Retro here. These uh, mailbag videos aren't really my thing, mostly because I think to myself, who's going to be interested in this junk that I buy besides me? Having said that, I have recorded video or taken pictures of the opening of almost every hobby-related item I have ever purchased over the last uh, four years, and I've amassed quite an archive of in-the-mail video and photo content over that time. Seeing as we are spending a lot more time at home these days, I thought that it might be a good time to start editing together some of these package unwrapping moments. I hope that you find this interesting. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more in the mail stuff or less in the mail stuff, or if you would like a closer, more in-depth look at any of the items shown in this video. Keep in mind, this is a random compilation of videos shot recently and not so recently. So please try to enjoy. I am not kidding when I say I've had a lot of bits and pieces arrive over the past many months. And in a lot of cases, it's taken me quite a while to get around to opening some of the items. That said, whenever I do open a package, I always record it, thinking someone out there might find this interesting at some point. So here we are. And I hope you find it interesting at this point. This is going to be a random compilation opening of items I've received over the past year and a half, and in some cases, a lot older than that. I do hope you enjoy this mailbag video, but before we get into it, there is a little bit of sponsorship administration to take care of. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, where you can order one or two layer prototype PCBs in one of six colors for the low price of $5 for 10 PCBs ready to ship to you in 24 hours. And remember, if you are new to PCBWay, your first order is free. Click the link to join at the top of the screen. Once your account is active, you will receive a $5 welcome bonus. And joining is easy. All you need is an email address and a password, and you're ready to get started. Okay, here we go. If it's not already apparent, these are ICs. More specifically, Logic DIP ICs for repairing Commodore 64s. I was working on the repair of a very sick Commodore 64 well over a year ago now. There is a video on that, by the way. And it required the replacement of several 7.4 Logic ICs. These happen to be multiplexer and AND gate ICs. I did order these from overseas, as I usually do, but it was taking far too long, so I needed to get these locally. And I paid too much. But if you need this type of out-of-production IC and you need it quickly, then you don't have much of a choice. Next, from the same delivery pile. This one is definitely from China. And it is taped up watertight. How the hell do you open this thing? Ah, these are USB-powered rigid LED strips. Rigid because the LED strip is mounted on an aluminum base. I ordered two of these because I had the bright idea that when I record videos, in particular close-up macro shots, the extra versatile illumination would really help with the quality of the video. However, I have yet to use them for that because the color temperature of these LEDs is a lot more white daylight than I like and they flicker way too much in recorded video. But I'm sure I will find another use for them. Now one thing I haven't done and I will do now is test these lights with a USB tester. But first let's take a quick look at the eBay listing. These are described as USB 35 centimeter 7 watt 24 SMD 5630 LED rigid strip hard bar light. DC 5 volts, yes. Recharge, no. I bought two of them for 1062 Canadian. Oh, and a little handy tip for those that might not know I always take advantage of the notes available on my purchased items so I can keep track of when I received items or didn't receive items. I have a USB tester plugged into a Quick Charge 3 USB charger, which should be more than sufficient for powering these lights. Let's turn it on. Oh, wow. 
this LED strip is drawing more than an amp and starting to suck the life out of my USB charger. You can see the output voltage has dropped to 4.9 volt, making this a 5 watt LED light strip. This might require more testing in a future video. And here's the USB charger I was using for that test. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in seeing some more stress testing of this charger. Okay, moving along. Screws. I did not order screws. But it makes an interesting sound, whatever it is. Ah, interesting. These are tiny brass rivets. Although I have not tried it yet, apparently these are super handy for repairing lifted or damaged eyelets on old retro computer motherboards, or any motherboards for that matter. This kit contains a thousand pieces, that's 100 pieces of 10 different sizes. The idea is you might have to slightly enlarge the through hole on the damaged PCB and then slip in one of these rivets and then carefully mushrooming over the straight side that you push through the PCB with a center punch or similar conical shape tool. And I'm sure we all know where this came from. This is a two-pack of classic SNES-style D-pad game controllers. I did get these quite a while ago because I needed them for my part in the Think Different Challenge, organized and hosted by Perifractic, and also included Yan Beta and even the 8-bit guy. It's a fun four-part video series to watch if you're into retro computers and haven't seen it. I needed these particular controllers because the face of them is completely flat and I had created a custom label that needed a perfectly flat surface to stick to. Not from China. Pretty colored power cables. I have one of those long workbench power bars at the back of my bench, mostly filled up with the classic beige or gray power cables like these ones. I wanted some high quality power cables of different colors so I could easily differentiate what was plugged into what, and more importantly where the other end was plugged into my bench power bar. I have to say the quality of these cables is excellent. They are very thick. You can see here they're 14 AWG, so 14 gauge, rated for 300 volts, and they say they are CSA certified. The plug ends are very high quality as well. The embossed stamp here shows that this is a product from Phantom Cables and even includes the CSA certification logo. Nice. Next, another fun one to shake. This time we have some EEPROMs. This is, besides being out of focus, an M2764A UV erasable EEPROM. It comes in a 28-pin dip package and can hold about 8K of data, perfect for making retro computer cartridges like the Commodore 64 dead test cartridge. Well, this is a puffy one.
Uh, yes, a restocking of basic 28 pin dip sockets. These are dual wipe dip sockets. Dual wipe meaning the contact touches the leg of the IC on both sides, making for a better connection than single wipe dip sockets. What also makes for a better connection? Straight legs. I guess that happens when you buy these in bulk, a bag of a hundred. This is a much more recent arrival, and I think I know what it is. Yep, these are flat top LEDs. I just finished a three-part video series on how to make your own Commodore 64 Saver an over-voltage protection device. You can see here in the finished project there is an LED indicator on the top left, but the LEDs I had on hand protrude quite a bit from the top, more than I want, and I was hoping that these flat top LEDs would have a lower profile. That looks like it's going to be better. I'll have to test it in a future build. Okay, we're getting to the end of this pile of stuff, so we'll move on to this second last item. Okay, what can it be? Interesting packing. It is a power supply. This is a Meanwell PT45A 3 output power supply. It can accept an input voltage from 100 to 240 volts AC mains and will output plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, and minus 5 volts. And why would I want a power supply like this? Well, that answer is in the next and final package to open. And last of today's pile. This I bought off of eBay from a US seller and got it for a really good price. Heavy. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, we have an imported hair. Follicle still attached, I see. Lovely. Anyway, let's open the heavy one. Sneak a peek. Exciting. Ta-da! It's a ColecoVision game console. My first ColecoVision to be exact. I didn't pay too much for it, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because it's a bit crusty. It's going to need a heck of a clean. Yep, going to need a bit of work. And it only came with one controller, and the power supply, I think, was described as possibly faulty. Faulty, you say? Well, it's a good thing we just opened that Meanwell power supply with all the correct output voltages necessary to replace an original ColecoVision power supply. Here is our single controller. A little bit dirty, but looks to be in good shape otherwise. Now I just need a second controller. If anyone watching happens to have a spare controller floating around that they don't need, leave a comment below and I will get back to you.
And this, I assume from the weight, is the original power supply, possibly faulty. And even if it is faulty, there's one part that we can use in our replacement power supply, and that would be the cable and connector, because this is an oddball connector. I have seen that you can 3D print replacements, but I don't have a 3D printer. So I guess in an upcoming video, we will look at replacing the original power supply with this new one. And of course, reusing this very strange ColecoVision power connector. And I think that's it. That's all for this video. So thanks, Posty, for bringing me all this cool stuff. And thanks to all of you for watching. If you are interested in purchasing any of the items shown in this video, please see the affiliate links below. They don't cost you anything to click. A big thanks to all of my channel subscribers, and an extra big thanks to all of my Patreon subscribers. If you would like to support this channel and my efforts here, like these fine folks, then please see the Patreon link in the description. Finally, don't forget to like, dislike, and comment below. Be safe everyone, see you again soon.